All right, so we're the main goal of this video is going to be to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. How do we go about doing that? I mean, we're going to list out all the properties and ways that you can do that. But before we get to that, we want to kind of throw in this this one theorem about parallel lines. This is a, a lot about parallelograms, and so this kind of applies here. And we're going to see that it we're going to state it, and it's going to go away for a little while, and then show back up again. So um, we're we're basically stating in this theorem that if you draw several parallel lines and you cut them by a transversal, so let's kind of write out what this is saying. If three parallel lines are cut by a transversal, so here's one, okay, two, and three. And again, we would mark these as uh, parallel by using the arrows. So I could say arrow, arrow, single arrow, okay. These are parallel lines that if I cut these by a transversal, which I can cut it wherever I want, so let's just say like right there, okay. And we measure the space in between the parallel lines, so from this point to this point, and I get the same distance in between the other pair of parallel lines. Right? So if I measure these two, and I get the same distance, then, here's my then, if I draw any other transversal through these three parallel lines, that the space in between will also be congruent. So here's an example. If I drew one over here and said, you know what, a really sharp transversal like that, okay? What this is claiming is that if I were to measure the space between the parallel lines on this side, right, and it's different, it's not necessarily going to be the same as over here, whatever if this comes out to be, that the space between the second two parallel lines will also be that measure. And I can do this for as many tra transversals as I want. So if I came through the middle here and I drew one straight down the middle right there, okay, and I measured that one, that the space here, again, not necessarily the same as any of the other transversals, but whatever this distance is, right, I can say that this one will also be the same. And this will work for as many transversals as we want, right, that if we draw uh, several parallel lines and we measure the space between them and they are the same then every transversal that we draw through those parallel lines will have the same property right so if we use that on a simple example like this right so what they're telling us in this trapezoid right is that rw and sv are parallel so let's add that in okay and sv and tu are parallel which means that that this is parallel all three of these lines are parallel, right? So, and then they're also claiming over here that RS is five, and ST is five, and WV is seven. So I'm taking all their information and I'm adding it into the picture, right? They're wondering what is WU, which is the length of this long segment. What our property says is that if the left-hand side has congruent parts, then the right-hand side will also have congruent parts. So this little segment is seven, and what that means is that WU would have to be 7 plus 7, which is 14, right? So this is an application that we're going to be able to use for any of our shapes that use parallel lines. If we were to draw a third parallel segment through the middle and we got equal parts, it's equal parts on both sides, okay? So we'll use that in a little bit when we start talking about trapezoids, and we can also use it in parallelograms in some cases, okay? So let's talk about the main idea of this, uh, this video, which is how do you prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And so what I'm giving you is five different ways that you can prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And really what these five are noting is that if you prove that any of the properties of parallelograms is true of a quadrilateral, then it is a parallelogram. Okay? So here are your five, just to quickly summarize the properties that you've seen before. If both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, then it's parallelogram. That's really just the definition. So if we can prove that, then it's parallelogram. If both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, it's a parallelogram. If, this is where we gotta be careful. Hey, this is not exactly the, the property. If both consecutive angles are supplementary, I'm sorry, if we pick an angle and we check both of the consecutive angles and they are both supplementary, then this is a parallelogram. So that one's a little bit hazy. We have to actually do two checks. If I pick some angle and I go to the one to the left and the one below, they both have to be supplementary. And so really what this is just proving is, is it's proving that we uh, same side interior angles are supplementary, which is a parallel lines thing. Okay? So we're checking that. That's third possibility. The fourth one, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So remember, notice I'm notice saying both, right? So not just one, it has to work in both cases. And finally, if both diagonals bisect each other, 
that's a fifth way, right? So let's take a look at a simple example, right, of this true. If I'm saying I want this to be a parallelogram and I'm looking at the sides, what I really want to be true is both pairs of opposite sides to be congruent. So I want these two statements to be true. I would like y to be equal to x plus 2 and I would like 3x minus 5 to be equal to 2x plus 1. Okay. So this is a situation where I can solve this second one and figure out what's the x value have to be so that this is true. Subtract the 2x over, add the 5 over, and I find out that if this is going to be a parallelogram, then x has to be 6. Let's just go plug that in and make sure it works. 3 times 6 is 18. 18 minus 5 is 13. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 plus 1, also 13. So that's good. That worked, right? I figured out that the top and the bottom will both be 13 as long as x is 6. And now I can use this to solve my other one. I can go back up here and say if I plug in my new information that x has got to be 6, this has to be a 6. And so I find out that y is equal to 6 plus 2. My y would have to be 8. So let's just double check. If I plug in a 6 here, right, that's my x value, this becomes 8. And we just said, well, y is also going to be 8, so this would also be 8. So if this is going to be a parallelogram, x has to be 6, y has to be 8, okay, and these have to be the side lengths. It has to be a 13 on top and bottom, and it has to be an 8 on the left hand side and the right hand side. So that would be a way of applying this property. As long as x is 6 and y is 8, then this is a parallelogram. For any other values, opposite sides will not be congruent, and this will not work. Right? So here's a similar example. Okay? So I can look at this one and say, all right, I'm, giving, I'm being given angles now. So if I go back to my list, I'm really kind of looking at, well, these ones deal with sides. This deals with diagonals. So these number 3 and number 4 deal with angles. So I, I either have to prove that an angle is supplementary with both of its consecutive angles, or... I have to prove that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So I'm going to check this and see which one makes more sense. All right, so if I'm looking at um, opposite angles, all right, I'm going to look at this and say, all right, if opposite angles would be this situation, I would say that 4x plus 13 has to be equal to y plus 10. Those wouldn't be opposite angles. Okay? And the other way would be the, looking at e and g being congruent. That would be that 3y minus 2 is equal to 12x plus 7. That would be a second situation that's true. And I'm looking at these and saying, all right, well, that's a system. I could solve that. That would work. Okay. All right. But that's kind of a lot of work. I don't really want to have to do all that work if I don't have to. So instead, I have another property, and it said, if you can show me that all of the consecutive angles are congruent, or I'm sorry, all of the consecu consecutive angles are supplementary, then that would be another way of doing it. So I'm kind of looking at this and saying, eh, this is true, but it's not an easy way to do it. So let's kind of cross this off and try a different strategy. Okay? If I look at f and g, I like f and g better because both of those expressions have an x in them. So let's say here's what has to be true. If I add together f plus g, I get 4x plus 13 plus 12x plus 7. And these are supplementary angles because they're consecutive. They're right next to each other. So this is 12x plus 7. When I add together f and g being consecutive, I should get 180. This is much more easily solvable than having to work with a system. So it's an option to work with the system, but I'd rather work with something that only has one variable in it. So this looks like now 16x plus 20 is equal to 180, okay? which means 16x is equal to 160. So my x would have to be 10, right? That's way easier to solve than dealing with a system, right? So I specifically chose to use the property that consecutive angles have to be supplementary if this is a parallelogram, right? And so I'm going to use this information, and I'm going to go over to the other side now, okay? If I look at E and H, I get that same situation. E and H would have to be supplementary if this is a parallelogram. So I'm going to say here's the other situation that has to be true. Right, 3y minus 2 plus y plus 10 would also have to equal 180 because of that third property. So if I solve this one, it looks like 4y uh, plus 8 would have to equal 180, okay? which means that 4y would have to equal 172. And if you divide this by 4, it looks like you get uh, 4 goes into 17 four times, 4 goes into 12 three times. Y would have to be a 43. 
Okay. And so if you notice, this avoided me having to use the substitution method and the elimination method, and I was able to get to my answers the same way. Right. So if you had to solve this one, you would have gotten the same values, but with a lot more algebra and work involved, and I'd rather solve something that looks like this, right? So you have to really think about the problem and say, what's the easiest strategy to get my x's and my y's? And if you take this x and y value and you plug them back in, you will get a situation where E is supplementary with F and E is supplementary with H. G is supplementary with F, G is supplementary with H. It'll all work out and you'll see that you do have a parallelogram with those two values, okay? So if again, we have these five uh, properties to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram and they all rely on the properties that we talked about uh, about opposite sides being congruent, opposite angles being congruent, diagonals bisecting each other, angles being supplementary with consecutive angles. We have one additional strategy that we can use that is not based on the properties directly and that is this one. Okay, In this problem we're saying here's a sixth way that you can make this happen. Maybe you don't have information about all the sides and all the angles and you can't use that, but if you can show that one pair of opposite sides is both congruent and parallel, the same pair of sides, then it's parallelogram. Okay? So this one is relying on you only having information about one set of sides, where when we were looking at the other ones we needed to know about both sets of sides. Okay? And so this one works, we can go through and prove this, but essentially it really works because the parallel lines will allow us to say that we have lots of supplementary angles, right? And we'll be able to use that to to prove that um, one of the other properties is true, right? So if I take a look at this example, okay, we're wondering now that we know these six properties, can I prove that these are uh, that this is a parallelogram given the information that they gave us? So if we take a look, they're saying, okay, I, I know that angle A is 50, and I know angle D is 130. And I know AB is 5 and DC is 5. So they took all the given information and put it on this picture for us. Right? Here's the information that we get. Because 50 plus 130 is 180, then AB okay, and DC are parallel lines. So if you remember back to parallel lines, we said if consecutive angles or if same side interior angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. So I can use the 50 plus 30 equals 180 to say, AB is parallel to DC. And so this is now that new situation where we're saying I can show you that AB and DC are parallel and I can also say that AB and DC are supplement or sorry are congruent because they both equal 5. This is that last situation. So if you have a way of proving to me that this is true, then you have enough information to say that the the shape is a parallelogram.